In a few weeks, the Palestinian Authority is scheduled to present a resolution at the United Nations General Assembly proposing the creation of the State of Palestine. Today, we're with Israel's Vice Foreign Minister, Danny Ayalon. Thank you for being with us. Nice to be here. Minister, okay, so the UN is going to vote for the resolution um, creating the State of Palestine. What's wrong with that? Didn't the UN vote for resolution for the creation of Israel in 1957? Absolutely, they did, but there was a big difference because in uh, 1947, when this was uh, introduced, it was about creating a two-state, a Jewish state and an Arab state. The Arabs refused, they attacked Israel, and the rest uh, is, is history. But Israel was not accepted to the United uh, Nations only in 1949, after it proved itself as an integral state with peoplehood being able to conduct its foreign affairs and also uh, domestic affairs with responsibility. Here, we have an agreement with the Palestinians which override any international agreements because bilateral agreements override multinational and multilateral agreements. You're referring to the Oslo Agreement. Yes, and according to the Oslo Agreements, the only solution can come through negotiations between the two parties. The way to move forward is the way that South Sudan moved forward. First of all, they had a resolution among the parties and then they took it to the UN for affirmation. You cannot just change and put things on its head because only the parties can decide what's best for them. Only the parties can implement what's in a uh, resolution and also legally this is what we signed with the Palestinians. So by them opting to the United Nations, they're closing the door on negotiations. They're choosing friction and conflict on cooperation and negotiation. The Palestinians say that one thing doesn't preclude the other. They can get recognition from the UN and they can negotiate with Israel afterwards. Why do you have any suspicions that that may not be the case? Andreas, it's an oxymoron. Uh, on, first of all, to, uh, if they get a resolution in the United Nations, it's a resolution that they will dictate, which will actually uh, set the terms according to their, uh, I would say, to their uh, capricious uh, wills. But the resolution at the UN should be at the end of negotiations representing the interests of both parties. If you go first to the United Nations, what reason is there to negotiate? And the Palestinians will be locked more into an intransigent position and they will not negotiate. Explain, to, not me, explain to me why. why, why that's the case. What, what, exactly, in, see, let, yeah. let's, let's be concrete. Because you see, in order to reach a solution, you have to have a compromise. Israel has already compromised in many, many ways. You look at the Israeli position from 1993, when the negotiation started, until today, we are the ones that paid major down payments without getting anything, anything in return. We helped create a Palestinian Authority in the West Bank on 42%. We already gave them 42% of the West Bank. We gave them 100% of Gaza. We took down settlements in Gaza in the disengagement in 2005. We supplied them with arms. We helped them economically. And this is before, before we talk about the final status agreement. And everybody is asking, you know, what Israel is willing to do. We are willing to do a lot. And we have been doing a lot. Nobody is asking about the Palestinians. What are they willing to do? What should they do? Well, they should give up what they call the right of return, refugees coming to Israel. Refugees can only come to their own state. Why are we creating, for the first time in history, a Palestinian state? So they have a state for mm -hmm. the Palestinians. And they demand the Palestinians, mm -hmm. refugees, to come to Israel. Mm -hmm. Second. Doesn't make sense. Secondly, they have to agree on security uh, arrangements because we need to assure that they will mm -hmm. not attack us anymore and they have not agreed on, on these issues. Thirdly, 
we have to agree on Jerusalem. Jerusalem has been the capital of uh, the Jewish people for more than 3,000 years. There was no other sovereign over Jerusalem. There were many occupiers. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerusalem, you know, has been mentioned in our Bible, the Judeo-Christian uh, Bible, 7, 700 times, mm -hmm. not even once in the Quran. So, you know, they, we have to find a, a solution there. And of course, final borders has to be negotiated. And what they want to do is, first of all, have all these issues dictated by a resolution. So why is there a reason for negotiation? So what they say is just logically not possible. So let me make sure I understand you. What you're saying is, if there's a resolution, the resolution will say there will be a Palestinian state on the borders of 1967. So what you're afraid of is that from then on, the Palestinians will go to the negotiating table and say, this is what the world has okayed, therefore, this is what you have to do. Is, is that... Theoretically, let, let's say we do come to the 67 borders. The 67 borders should be at the end of the negotiation as a result of the negotiations, and not as in the beginning of negotiations, because if this happens, what motive, motivation, or what incentive would the Palestinians have to compromise on the other issues. Everything is interrelated. Mm -hmm. The borders issues to the refugees, to Jerusalem, to the settlement, to security arrangement. Everything is interrelated. So if you dictate, then it precludes solutions on other issues because the Palestinians will sit and they will wait. You cited the case of South Sudan, but haven't other countries been born out of US, UN resolutions? Only after bilateral agreements among the parties. For instance, you know, there were many countries recognized after the fall of the Soviet Union. You know, you have the 15 yeah. uh, member yeah. states of, uh, yeah. of the CIS, of the uh, Soviet Union, yeah. uh, former uh, states, Yugoslavia. All of it was agreements among themselves bilaterally, and only then it came to the United Nations. Czechoslovakia, you know, the new state of Slovakia, the new state of Czech Republic, it was a, an agreement, how to split, where to split, and only then it went to the United Nations. The Palestinians is the only case where they want to change and put the whole process on its head. First go to the UN, and mm. then come to the region. It doesn't work this way, and the reason the Palestinians are able to do it is because they enjoy an automatic majority, 22 Arab countries that support them, part of 57 Islamic countries that work as one block, and they are also part of the uh, uh, developing country block, what used to be the non-aligned. And so they have about 120 countries that already are in their pockets no matter what happens. Minister Yadon, but UN resolutions, General Assembly resolutions, are non-binding. So what's the big deal? The big deal is that it shuts the door for negotiations because uh, by breaching and violating the agreements that we have not to go to the United Nations but to solve it uh, uh, just uh, bilaterally uh, among the parties, they shut the door to negotiation. They choose conflict and friction over cooperation and negotiation. And also it will be uh, difficult for the Palestinians to negotiate and compromise because they will rely on this one-sided resolution that they pass in the UN by the automatic majority of countries that are so far from the region and, you know, couldn't care less. And I say the only way to create a Palestinian state, we are for a Palestinian state, we, but it's not just a matter of deciding a Palestinian state, it's also about the details which are so important. You know, the, they say God is in the details, you know, where are the borders? What about water supply? What about uh, security arrangements? And so on and so forth. So the only way is to decide it is in Jerusalem and Ramallah to have negotiations. The fate of the region will not be decided in faraway places like New York or capitals that are so far and have no really direct interest in the region.